I'm going to cut right to the great John Falkery of Clubhouse. John, what's happening today? Uh, dude, I'm just praying you can hear me, and I'm praying that he doesn't cry. That's what I'm doing right now, man. Real talk. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for joining us. You mean, you know, is this the is this the kid who's sick? Say hi to everybody, Landon. Yeah, Landon's uh, Landon's got a little fever. He's uh, oh. a hard time. Oh, but I'm sorry, little buddy. He'll be all right soon. I hope. Oh my God, you guys buy some Bitcoin for Lennon, guys, <laughs> for his good health. Not <laughs> with you guys, man. What are you chatting about? Uh, we've been chatting about, you know, the usual switching to your worldview to think on Bitcoin terms. So people are asking, like, what do I do about this volatility? You know, I'm worried about the price is going up, is going down. I'm saying, you know, after a while, you don't even have to sweat it, man, because you're just going to be thinking on, uh, you're going to be thinking on Bitcoin terms. Dude, I'm, I'm in Bitcoin Zen right now, man. Like, Get to a number you want to be happy with. Get to a number that like you've put out there. You won't be happy when you get there. So surprise. And then two, like if you're creating monetary energy every day, if you're creating value still, then you shouldn't be worried about short term. In fact, I don't know if there's anything that's more high time preference than short term price. Uh, 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 being worried about short term price movements. You know, like I, I honestly, I mean, you probably could tell, hopefully, in my face more than in my voice, how much I don't care about what the price is doing. <laughs> short run. You know, Tina, my friend Tina, who a lot of y'all have been yelled at by, um, he'll be telling people all the time, like, you know, it's worry. It's like worrying about where you're going to park in LA while you're driving through Kansas City. And just like, dude, I'll worry about that later. I'm so not worried about fiat price pegging, man. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. So what was that transition? Working. Let me give you some context. I'm more worried about this mic working and this kid yelling than I am like any price movement. Right? <laughs> not even close. Hey, you, you sound good to me. And the kid, the kid seems to be at peace with his Bitcoin, uh, with the Bitcoin price as well. So this is great. Awesome. Man. You've been following any of this Fed watch? You follow what, uh, what they, what, uh, Jerome was talking about yesterday. And you guys talk about that at all? We actually went to review his comments on November 30th, talking about retiring the transitory narrative. And so basically we've been talking about how the Fed is more concerned with controlling the narrative than their actual tools. Like they don't actually have the control that they give people the illusion they have. So what are your thoughts about it? Did you follow yesterday's meeting? Um, I caught some of it um, for obvious reasons and I missed a bunch of it, but I was able to get, all, I mean, deduce quite a bit. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've heard Joe Carlos, sorry, talk about this, but I tend to agree with him. Like, I think the Fed is just too worried about the illusion of control. I think more people think they have more control than they do. I think they're taking their cues from the credit markets and bond markets in particular. And ultimately you have, you know, a somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy because they're basically just doing what they think the market wants them to do. Um, you know, I, I think this story has been told since Greenspan in terms of what central bankers have had to do. I think they have no choice but to print. I honestly think this is somewhat of a mistake. Um, I don't think, you know, reducing purchases by $20 billion in a, hundred trillion dollar plus market is going to have much effect um and 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 even if it does like what are they doing are they just trying to signal hey you know or at least i think they're just trying to signal the market strong we're fine um when we've done this in the past and steven van meter's done some good videos on this i know a lot of bitcoiners aren't a big fan of of steven van meter but i think he had a lot of value still and i'm able to deduce with you know from him quite a bit and so like i think he you know he's right to say that in other times like you know, incomes could actually support this. The economy could support these types of moves, but the reality is in the real economy and people probably can empirically tell you this. I mean, like look around, like, you know, in the real world, man, there's just like buildings shuttered everywhere, you know? And yeah, while there's job postings, you know, everywhere, it's just like, depending on what skills you have, depends on whether or not those jobs are desirable. Um, and, and there's a whole lot of things that I guess we could point to over the last 18 months without boring everyone. But um, the reality is, is adjusted for inflation, wages are actually not keeping up at, at this point. And so I don't know, like if, you know, ultimately uh, tapering and or increasing rates, um, you know, artificially keeping these things low might be what we need to do until Bitcoin can be big enough to, quite frankly, um, take the baton from 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 this mess of a, a credit based system. Um, I'm basically taking a lot of my cues from Jeff Booth and 
in the greatest game um, um, article that he laid out. And I'm watching it play out <laughs> in pretty fine order. I think a lot of people who've read that probably would agree. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So to what extent, if at all, I mean, what do you think about people who are new to the space or just getting into Bitcoin? I mean, who should they be looking to in terms of like the government and leadership and what should they be following, if anything? How does this affect Bitcoiners? I don't think it does. I mean, I generally don't think it does. Like, I, I, like I hear various debates on various ends of like the inflationary narrative. Like, I totally disagree with a lot of people in Bitcoin and how they frame the inflation argument. I think they're too focused on taking a picture of a stake and telling me it got more expensive without looking at other like components of why that might be expensive, right? Is it monetary inflation or are there other things happening? And I'm not pow pow here, you know, yelling transitory. That's not what my goal is. But um, I would say like, no matter where you are on these particular debates that I've been having with a lot of people here, like the, the answer is still the same. The answer is you have no real other alternative except for buying Bitcoin in my mind. And like, you know, I don't tell people to go 100% Bitcoin, but I tell people that's where like most of my allocation of like investment capital is going. Um, you know, once you change your hurdle rate to Bitcoin, so like when you go into your ROI calculation and your, your cost of capital starts to like think about what Bitcoin's performance can be or what it will be, it becomes really hard to find other things to actually invest in. Or, um, and I'm talking about even as a business owner, when I'm talking about allocating business, even within my own, within my own business, I'm thinking to myself like, this makes sense to pursue or do I just buy some more Bitcoin and put it on the balance sheet, right? And um, so I would tell you like, you know, the, the, I wouldn't be looking for massive clues. Um, those are traders games, I think for the most part, and very few people are sophisticated enough to execute those, when, especially when you take into account taxes, opportunity costs, you know, your wife yelling at you for missing like way too much time with the family, et cetera. Like the reality of it is, is you just buy Bitcoin. And you can do it at like at times now where we're going to laugh in 5, 10, 15 years. Be like, man, I remember when I was stressing about having bought some $55,000 Bitcoin, um, but <laughs> I bought it at 48600 Like, dude, you know how stupid that's going to sound? Um, dude, yeah. yeah I, that's my take. I'm, I'm laughing at my mom because she just recently got into it at about 60 k And of course, the price just dumps. You know, for 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 a near term scale, they it really it drops like twenty percent, and I'm like, you're gonna be laughing about this in ten years and wish you just kept buying. You don't need to fear this small dip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, dude, we, he's of age to be understanding what's happening here. This is gonna be a funny conversation. That's yeah, that's gonna be really funny. <laughs> um, I'm so happy you joined us. So we actually had a question from Twitch for you. People were wondering what's the name. I haven't read it. What's the name of that article that Jeff Booth wrote that you were talking about? Yeah, the article is called The Greatest Game. It's a Medium article from like December of 2020. The Greatest okay. Game. I also recommend his book, The Price of Tomorrow. It's a little, it's, I think it's a 2020 um, um, write and read as well. Sorry for all the background noise, guys. When you when I when I wrote the handle Pay It Forward Dad, I wasn't kidding, man. I'm full time dad, part time <laughs> CEO. <laughs> that's funny man that's a great kid so what's uh how's business i mean what's that what's that like how's business for you um i mean depending on which one you're talking about right i'm, I'm launching a bunch of things for bitcoin right now but the fiat mines are going great um technology services is a place a great place to be um but yeah working on some things actually as it relates to to the kids man so um i've been compelled to try to work on things for the bitcoin community um, whether it's, you know, making folks laugh at church um, or whether it's just trying to help educate noobs and, and give out sats wherever possible. But the, the real game is like, you know, I'm a dad, man. And like, I don't remember life before being a dad. And I probably identify more with being a dad than anything else in my life that's important to me. And so I realized like talking to my children about Bitcoin is not very easy. Like Talking to Bitcoin to anybody is not very easy. Talking to Bitcoin or talking about Bitcoin to my three-year-old um, who's really, really, really precocious um, and <laughs> threatens to steal my Bitcoin <laughs> pretty <much. laughs> um, it, It's not easy. And so what I realized is just like part of what I've been wanting to work on is this tool for parents to ultimately create ready, present conversations around Bitcoin, help to kind of model behavior. And so JC Crown and I were tooling with some NFC technology um, he sent me some casino chips that had NFCs in them that would just prompt a light, lightning invoice on your phone. And so my daughter thinks that these little casino chips are 
in fact, Bitcoins, right? And why wouldn't she, right? And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we, uh, we launched a, a, a thing called Sat Centives, Sats Centives, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea being to create um, kind of a feedback loop and uh, create incentive behavior for, for our kids to ultimately like work toward goals and be able to have conversations around, you know, what money is in a really fun, tangible, and like not intimidating way. And so, um, you know, we're ultimately going to launch something that I'm sure is going to cost me a ton of money <laughs> and isn't going to be an economically viable product, but I still think it's something we want to do for the, for the Bitcoin community. And so, yeah, man, we're uh, working on that. Um, I got people in my ear talking about Bitcoin mining on the, on the regular, and it's, it's getting increasingly more difficult to say, no, I'm not interested in that. Um, and then, you know, you and I are toying with some things that you and I know about, you know, trying to get some, some, some fun things produced for the, uh, for the Bitcoin community on the common side of things. So yeah, man, just a couple of things, uh, you know, percolating. And then I got this monster who, uh, who won't let go of me any, <laughs> any, any time I'm around. So there we go. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's a lot of products coming out for kids like Bitcoin books. Yeah. I've seen like three or four Bitcoin books for kids come out in this last year. You, you got a hold of any of those? Yeah, man. I, I got Goodnight Bitcoin. Um, I highly recommend it. Those are the folks that made the Shamari cards. If you're familiar with them, um, their, their names escape me. I'm a little asleep, but um, they're a great Bitcoin uh, a family. They put the Shamari cards together, some Bitcoin book. Um, there's one I posted on my uh, Instagram, CJ Wilson, it uh, pointed it out to me. I just ordered it, so I don't, um, I, I can't really speak for it, but yeah, I would tell you as a Bitcoin parent, like I crave for Bitcoin products. Like I buy stuff that has Bitcoin on it that I'm not even sure I like to be frank on the underlying product, but mm-hmm. it has an orange B and it looks like something for my kids. I'm probably going to buy it. So anybody who's developing a product, you got an easy sale here. Um, but really, I mean, with the Sat Senefs thing, man, I mean, like, honestly, it's just something I want. I want for my kids and JC Crown wanted it for his kid. And just like, you know, I'm trying to teach my kids about Bitcoin. It's really important to me. I think like in, inherently there's a lot of like life lessons in, in like being able to extract from proof of work once you start to like separate electricity and difficult math problems, right? Like reality is, is like proof of work can like be manipulated and manifested into like, you know, taking the trash out, cleaning your room, right? Like finishing some like reading or, you know, and staying away from the screen time or just whatever is important for you to like teach your kids. Right. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I, um, I have a, a lot of like takes on, on, on parenting and then the nexus that it crosses with Bitcoin. Like, you know, inherently we all work really hard, right. To like give better to our children than we had. Like, I don't want my kids to live the life that I had as a kid. Like that wasn't fun. Um, there was a lot more trauma and a lot more like risk that just, you know, I've worked hard to make sure my kids won't have. And, you know, nonetheless, but how do you do, how do you create adversity, right? Like, how do I create an environment where this guy isn't going to be a spoiled little brat, you know, and I struggle with that. Yeah. Balancing those two things is difficult. Part of why I want to try to build this tool, see how, see if it works. Yeah. I don't have any kids myself, man. So I can't, I can't speak to that, but I do wonder, um, I think because I don't have kids, just my mind is like in a totally different place to, than yours, like day in, day out. And I tend to, um, yeah, you're sleeping like, better, man, without bags under your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. Get as much sleep as I need. Oh, shortly. I just want to shout out Eastside Tony said he started hosting a Bay area Bitcoin family meetup in San Jose and everyone's welcome. So if you're in that area and you're listening, go check yeah, it out. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, dude. Yeah. So, so one thing I wanted to ask you is, um, how do you know, or do you worry at all as a Bitcoiner about, uh, you know, the United States as a place to raise your kid? Do you think of, uh, flag theory at all? Do you think, cause a lot of Bitcoiners go down this sort of libertarian vote with your feet mindset. Do you disregard all that or where are you I, at? I don't disregard it. I do think it's a little hyperbolic at times, right? Like, yeah, like the reality is like, you got to go somewhere on earth, right? Um, and dude, I, I still consider myself a patriot. Like, I, I love my country. I, I want to see good things happen for my country, for my community. Um, you know, I I don't want to get into like status nationalist talk by any means, because I don't think I fit into that bucket. On the other hand, you know, I want to be able to be, you know, mobile and, and agile. But like, I don't want to leave the life I've built here. Like, I don't want to leave my extended family. Like, how many people can I take to El Salvador? You know, like... Um, 
so so part of me does think it's hyperbolic. I actually like subscribe to what Michael Saylor talks about ultimately. Like I think Bitcoin provides for a peaceful outcome. Um, you know, I, I feel like I'd be regurgitating a lot of Michael Saylor here, but the reality is, is that like when you play this out in your head, like I, one of the reasons that I, I lay out why I want, you know, <laughs> I want money printer go burr to a certain extent, because at this point, like you got a life patient, you know, patient on life support, they need drugs. Um, there's two options here, you know, you give them drugs <laughs> or it gets ugly. And so for me, I'd love to see, I'd say I'd love to see, but I'd, I'd hope that Bitcoin um, can continue to mature, um, not just in terms of market cap, but just in terms of its usability, its feasibility, just like um, it being understood by more people uh, um, uh, globally in, in a way that, you know, ultimately um, allows for Bitcoin to be a heat sink, I think as Tina puts it, but I tend to, I tend to agree with that. Like, I think that Bitcoin can be and is hope. And I think it, it allows for all of that hyperbolic talk about, oh, I'm going to leave to here or there or otherwise. Like the reality is I've been hearing that type of stuff from rich friends for a long time around tax policy. Do you know how many guys have left? Very few. And so, <laughs> um, because I do think that this is still the best place to, to, to raise a family. I think that like, there's a lot of things that happen, but I think inherently like, you know, the, the world's a really complicated place. And like, I would rather be here than, than most places to be completely frank. Um, I don't know what the future will hold. I, I'm not going to leave my family in dire straits if we have some like, I don't know, ap apocalyptic like circumstance. But it's hard for me to look around the world and look at other fiat currencies and be like, oh God, like, you know, the US dollar is the one that I'm worried about first, right? Yeah. Like the reality is, is I think like weaker economies and weaker uh, weaker currencies are, are likely to tumble before we see something like the U.S. On the other hand, I'm not like, you know, I also agree with Max on, on this piece. Like, I don't think the U.S. dollar um, as a fiat currency is going to be, you know, more likely to survive. Now, I got, I got, I got a uh, reinforcements, dude. I'm going to hand off the baby here. Um, oh, there you go. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't, man, like, I'm not like, I don't have plans to, to get up and bounce and go to other countries at the moment. And like, it's not within my purview to like spend a lot of time and energy on that. I, I do think Bitcoin leads to outcomes that are far better for, for all of us. Yeah. And I think we tend to, especially from a framework inside the United States, we uh, overlook how good we have it and how this might be the best place uh, that you can sit, sit tight and safely and, you know, raise your family as you have just just right here at home there's no need to look for another option another outcome unless you're really forced to do it you know i mean it depends basically what state and maybe do you what ever hear what these do you ever hear why they're telling you and what they're telling you about like like i so i played it out it's like well where are you gonna go and why is that gonna be any better you know mm -hmm. and maybe you will I, I i'm not here to like lay a case that there won't be um perhaps a better place to raise a family and depending on your values and depending on what matters to you i don't know your climate considerations right there's probably a lot that goes into that but the reality of it is dude is like i just i don't see a better place um and i, and I also think like you can vote your feet like we have a, we have a massive country dude like two coasts <laughs> like there's a lot there's a lot of room here and a lot of different kind of like experimental pots if you will to like move i mean you see a lot of bitcoiners moving down to texas um, you see folks moving to Florida. I imagine those types of uh, guinea pig tests will proliferate across the United States. And like, like I don't imagine us being split across Bitcoin lines. I think Bitcoin provides hope for all um, in various ways. And, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I just don't like, and again, maybe I look back at this in five years and go, oh, that was naive take, who knows? Um, but generally, dude, like yeah. I'm not spending a lot of time thinking about that. I, I do hear a lot of it from like friends of ours, I'm sure, and, and other people in the community, but it's not where a lot of my attention's at right now. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was wondering because that kind of those ideas are usually talked about and circulated among people like me that don't have any kids and uh are up for the adventure just like hey, let's go let's go move to El Salvador or like let's go move to uh you know, well not Germany now, but that was at one time considered the place to go with your bitcoin. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do think like, you know, I follow Katie, I think Katie's got a brilliant little business model that she works on. And I think um, it's savvy to be, you know, considering that part of the, the equation. But 
I mean, like, how do I joke all the time? He's just like, yeah, I'm going to bounce here. I'm about, Dude, you've been telling me this for a couple of years, and you're still sitting in Nevada, right? So, like, I don't think he's leaving the country. <laughs> he's going down to, like, Texas or something. Oh, man. He should at least leave the state, bro, Nevada. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's probably going to bounce to Texas is what he's telling me. But, like, my take on it is, like, I'm just going to Burger King. You know, it's like Burger King strategy for a long time was just, like, let McDonald's do all the market research on when to open, where to open a new location. And then Burger King would just go, you know, plop up. <laughs> plop up a block away from there so i just told, I just told like a few of my buddies that like i think are really deep into this and i was just like yeah you do you do like you do your thing and i'll just buy a plot of land down the street <laughs> like that's gonna be my i'm gonna burger king my way through this yeah there you go man yeah just just go where you need i mean the second i think it's maybe advantageous depending on your your politics to have a second passport but outside of that i don't see a reason like we're not under threat here at the united states and the nice thing is is wherever you are in the world uh tuning into this stream from i know we got people all over, all over the world listening it's uh your bitcoin's safe you know short of there's no government's gonna gonna change the protocol or take it from you or shut down the network so your, your bitcoin's always going to be safe if you spend so spend some time with due diligence and 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 uh securing it so that's part of the bitcoin zen equation man like take self-custody get into bitcoin zen price goes up you're wealthier price goes down you keep working and you acquire more um generationally your your family's going to be really really grateful um dude i, I don't like i don't um you know like i i don't know how if you spend a lot of time thinking about bitcoin like, I don't know how your politics can't change. Like, I almost like, like for me, I've, you know, and I get, I get criticized for this all the time. Like, oh, well, you know, there's no such thing as a centrist or something like that. I'm just like, well, one, I don't, I don't really consider myself a centrist. Like I look at things mm -hmm. and I have views on, on things individually. But one of the things that like Bitcoin realized for me is just like the back and forth fighting. And this isn't just unique to the United States, right? There's parties, systems all over the, the, the world. And like, for me, like all that Bitcoin did is it like, pushed me up the elevator to look down at these things and just be like, oh, you guys are basically fighting about fiat problems and don't realize it and are trying to pretend like you have a solution to a problem that isn't going to be solved by any of your policy proposals, right? This is a function of like, you know, you're like crying about education, you're crying about medical, like medical uh, costs, you're crying about the cost of college, you're talking about the, you know, the cost of, of rent or, or, or real estate. And it's just like, <laughs> Like, it's so obvious that all of these things are a function of just not having sound money. And so when we, when we move into those, like, you know, you start to look at it from a different paradigm, it's just like both of these things start to sound, both of these ideas, um, you know, depending on what the, what the given topic is, starts to sound really silly um, and really rather like not very productive. And so like for me, like, and Bitcoin's helped me to like turn the news down, turn the noise down completely and just like be able to look at things um, in, a, in a much more clear like mind space for for lack of a better term yeah absolutely uh one thing that i always urge people to do is you know whatever political side you fall on i wasn't very like a much of an up-to-date like political person before bitcoin i'm still not the most uh involved or interested in politics um but i have found myself participating more in the way of voting with my capital and i feel like voting by selling, you know, speculative attack on the US dollar, selling all my dollars for Bitcoin. I feel like that's my vote, which is I don't trust you guys to govern my property. I'm going to take care of my business and, and you can have your dollars back and do what you want with them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's another great, like another great way. It's like a silent, like opt out, right? Like, I think that's one of the things that's beautiful about Bitcoin. It's like no one's forced into it, right? Like you're not forced into the system. Um, you are forced into a fiat system, right? Like you have no choice. You're born into it. You're, you're born into a, a system that ultimately, like, you know, has really little to no control over your financial future in terms of the the energy you're storing and in your wages. And so, like, like even right now, you just talked about selling your dollars, right? Like you probably didn't think about selling your dollars when you first bought Bitcoin, right? It wasn't. You weren't selling your dollars. Mm -hmm. You were just buying. You were buying this like weird thing that your friends told you about, and you're like, what the. You know, you're sitting there trying to figure this thing out, right? But then you spend enough time about it and you realize, yo, I'm not just opting into a system. I'm opting out of a different mm -hmm. system, right? And so, like, that's why I feel like it's impossible to not have your politics shift. Um, I'm going to take myself downstairs if we're going to do this any bit longer. Um, 
Uh, I'll try not to pick yeah. up from trying not to go mid workout in the gym downstairs, but just let me know. No worries. Really quickly. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We'll riff with people in the audience. Thanks, man. All right. What's going on with y'all in the chat here? Let's uh let's let's do a let's do a check in. Let's do a check in. Chris, I don't know if your your screen shifted there. My master producer here. Guys, the guy behind the scenes of it all, his name is Chris. Chris Alemo. Go follow him on Twitter. And uh, yeah, follow Amateur Investors Podcast on YouTube as well. Um, all right, shout out. Let's do a quick commercial break. Check out the link in the description. Get your tickets to Bitcoin 2022. John F. is sure to be there. I'm sure to be there. Um, go subscribe to the Deep Dive. If you haven't already, there's a free tier, which is the latest in Bitcoin on-chain market intelligence written by Dylan LeClaire and Sam Rule. You can get in on the free free tier at deepdivebtc.substack.com. Check the link in the description. And it looks like we are back. What do we got? Where, where are you now? In a home gym in the basement? What's up, John? Uh, I'm, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the man cave, man. I gotta, yes. <laughs> got to find an escape. Uh, it'd be weird to give you a tour. And when people give me tours of their homes, I mostly roll my eye. So I, I can't. I can't <laughs> oblige. <laughs> I can't oblige, but... But no worries. Uh, this is where I escape to if I need to sneak in a workout. But um, yeah, dude, I um heard you mention Dylan. I'm a big fan of Dylan. Um, and and, and kind of back to the political note, I, I wanted to share this a, a second because I do think like most people associate me on like this nexus of Bitcoin and parenting on some level, which um, wasn't my goal. Uh, it just kind of happened, I suppose. But like, there's a whole generation like like Bitcoin's 12 years old, um, roughly, and. Um, we're, you know, a few weeks away from Genesis Block Day, the holy day of Genesis Block, as I, I'd like to say. Um, <laughs> hallelujah to all you faithful followers. But, dude, like, there's, there's like, a whole generation. Like, one of the reasons that I think this will be a peaceful transition is, like, there's a whole generation of, like, people, including my children, that will never live in a world without Bitcoin, right? Like, they won't have played this transition. You know, like, I'm old enough to, like, remember a world without computers everywhere you went, without mobile, like, you know, uh, smartphones and, and, and access to, to the world's computer at your fingertips, right? And like, I've successfully lived through that transition as well. And like, certainly the world hasn't been, you know, uh, bees and butterflies, but like the reality of it is, is that transition wasn't like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, like I didn't see guns at my neighbors, like, you know, like people weren't like shooting each other, like, and, like, to, like, you know, there wasn't an apocalyptic ending where people are trading booze and, and, and gold and stuff, right? Like, it just wasn't the case. And so like, mm -hmm. I think there's gonna be a whole generation of folks like, you know, um, on, the, on the older end from like guys like Dylan and Will on the, on the younger people, like, like my kids and, and, you know, perhaps even your kids that you don't even, you know, aren't even an inkling in your eyes at this point. And so it's gonna be a whole generation of you that just live in a Bitcoin world. And it's gonna be like such a silly thought that like, like, wait, you guys just like printed all the time. Like that, that's all you did. <laughs> really? Like you guys, you guys like, dude, that you guys had a bald guy on your, on this like colorless, <laughs> <laughs> like, nope really you walked around with these things like i, I like I, I oftentimes and, and joe carlos has done a good job of helping me to evolve my thinking on this particular play but i oftentimes think that like conversations around bitcoin lack imagination like i think bitcoin's best days their best games like oftentimes people talk about oh well uh, you know you got in at 2012 or 2013 or, and so you got like you know, 12,000 X gains or whatever. And it's like, dude, I think the biggest gains are still to come. Like, I think the biggest, like, like, not only do I think that we're early, I think people who still haven't gotten here are still early. Like, like it, it's yeah. so painfully obvious to me. And then sometimes what I do is like, I just enter conversations from like a completely like, you know, I don't know, nomadic fashion. Like I'll pop into a clubhouse room or I'll pop into a crypto room or a blockchain room and listen to them talk. Listen to smart people, right? Controlling lots of capital potentially, um, probably in most other areas of their lives are 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 admired and you know uh, looked up to, and then and then listen to them tell you about how they're going to tokenize real estate. Listen to them tell you about some like phantom use case that even if it was a real use case and even if it actually accomplished that with a really like terrible technology to do it with, mm -hmm. right? What's the total addressable market there, right? And so like, you're sitting here looking at people distracted that don't even know the rules to the game. 
you're playing Monopoly with folks that literally don't even know the rules to the game. And you're just running around go stacking your sats in a way where like the gun hasn't even clicked off yet. Like we're at the start of the race, you're able to run. People are literally not even at the race yet. And like, it is so stupidly early to me. I, I can't, like, I almost fumble over myself trying to think about it to a certain extent. Like it's, it's so obvious that, you know, it, it, the, the the function not only of like number go up but i'm talking about how it affects things second and third order effects like how we start to like look at the world how education systems formulate how our healthcare systems how our food looks you know tomer did a really good job putting that video together and i'm not mm-hmm. as like like hopium german as, as, as tomer and i love tomer to death and he helps to like rouse my imagination too but i think he's more right than not right in that video um, and, you know, I think that a lot of folks like lack imagination, especially when focused on short term price movements. Um, and, and the reality is most people lack a lot of imag- imagination with most things. So like Bitcoin isn't you know something I think that they spare. Yeah, absolutely. It's a. Uh... It's interesting. Like we come, I mean, I get on here every day and I just tell people urgently buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. But in the real world, uh, my approach is a little bit different uh, because I know we're having fun here. And if I'm not excited, you guys aren't going to be excited. But I've found that when I first came to Bitcoin, of course, you're excited. You want to tell everyone you know about it. You want to urgently get your friends and family involved. But it doesn't work out that way. People people hate to be told what to do with their with their capital and their money. And it's really hard for people to admit that they didn't understand everything there was to know about money, which I think n- no one does, right? I don't think we understand what Bitcoin even is. We're all so- Dude, I was doing assurance work. I was doing audit work and consultant work and M&A work for big four for public accounting firms. I swear to God, I didn't know what money was. I just didn't. <laughs> it's like, here I am, like, you know, ultimately, like, on the CPA track to, to kind of become, like, this nerd accountant. And the truth is, I didn't know what money was. I, I really, really didn't. Know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the sooner you can admit that, I mean, you, you can only start yourself down this path, I believe, of you can introduce people to some concepts, but you have to take the initiative on your own. So what I found is... I, everyone in my life, in my, in my, in real life, like knows that I'm like, like a Bitcoin guy, I'm interested in it, but I'm not going to bother them. Right. If they have questions, usually when, yeah, usually, usually when the price is at the highest, they come trickling back in and looking to get in. So it's just like, I, I'm with you. I think those people are still early and they're not going to get in until a hundred K. Dude, I talked to my brother about Bitcoin for three years and like, I really didn't grok Bitcoin for, you know, quite frankly, until like late 2019, probably 2020. Um, The reality of it is, is that like, you know, it's a lot of energy to talk about something that benefits you almost none if you're already in. In fact, you may say that it benefits you less. Like you can make it really, really like, you know, like, I don't know, Darwinistic argument about like, I shouldn't tell anybody about this. I want to accumulate as much as possible. I'm Michael Saylor. I'm going to buy all the Bitcoin, right? But like, on the other hand, like it's one of the reasons that I, you know, I, one of one of the tweets I, I share that like resonates with a lot of people is like, and I pinned it at the top of my Twitter is, you know, like if I talked to you about Bitcoin, that was like my way of telling you in some form or another that like, yo, I love you and I care about you. And like most people are like, oh, you're pumping your bags. And I'm like, I mean, maybe they were pumping their bags in 14 and 15 and 13, but uh, you know, we're at a trillion dollars right now. How many people do you know that can move the market at a trillion dollars, right? Yeah. There's like not that many people in my life, right? I don't know. Like, I'm gonna go knock on my neighbor's door, and what do you think you're gonna pump the price? <laughs> like, it's it's all it's an entire entirely pay it forward type of action, you know. Like, mm-hmm. I'm watching like a lot of people. I'm sure in your life you're watching a lot of people like right now accumulate or probably like move into new wealth status, if you will, um, mm-hmm. especially in like fiat terms, and. I think it's a pretty interesting and noble kind of a, of a, of an experiment um, of like this new class of nouveau riche and like part of what I'm interested to see kind of play out as like kind of, I move into this new portion portion of my life and, you know, try to transition things to my children as they get older, et cetera, and raise my family. It's like, what do we do with this power? Right. Like, like, is, is this like a generation of like Lambo skeeters, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> Are these going to be the the real decision makers and the noblemen of today and the noble women of uh, of the future, if you will? Like, 
Like, are we just going to have a bunch of folks that like turn into like, you know, computer scientists that went rapper money where like there's one around with grills and, and chains and like Lambos or like, are these going to be folks that ultimately are organizing politically, um, organizing in their communities um, that are driving real solutions that are ultimately going to make the world better by using things like Bitcoins, you know, uh, either in itself or layers that are coming on top of Bitcoin, ancillary things that help to really support sound. I mean, like, even if you're just running a business, right? Like, so like, I'm almost like one of the reasons that I started to pull out myself from like early stage investing is like, I didn't want to run a business. I didn't want to invest in a business anymore. that just like, wasn't profitable. And it's just like, that sounds stupid and crazy, right? I don't, is it too loud? Can you guys hear the, the baby crying in the background? <laughs> we, we can hear the kid okay. crying, <laughs> but I, let me, let me make some more room here. But um, to kind of close that thought, I'm a, uh, I'm like left in this place where like, even if you're running a business at this point and you're just running a really healthy, like planned, well-planned business, then you're like in a place where I think you're supporting that. Give me one second here. No worries. No worries, John. Yeah, guys, show some love in the comments. I appreciate it so much that we have uh, John here today, even though he's got a sick kid at home. Uh, this kid is going nuts. Uh, we love it. This is one of the best streams and conversations I think we've had live so far. So just like feeling really blessed to have John here talk to us today. This is awesome. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm really pumped to see so many likes. Somebody liked right when I said that on the YouTube channel. That really helps us out boosts our numbers and we need that to give away more bitcoin to you guys i don't know let me ask uh producer are we able to give away some bitcoin right now is that possible okay we're gonna give away a little bitcoin right now so guys get your phones ready pull your earn carrot app up go to the link in the description or the qr code on screen www.earncarrot.com download that and you can win some next time we're going to flash a code on screen. It's flashed. Somebody's winning that Bitcoin right now. We're going to come up with a solution in the coming weeks so that multiple people can redeem that Bitcoin. But for now, we've got, you know, relatively low numbers on the views. So we're just going to have a competition one guy at a time or girl can win that Bitcoin. So excited. If you won the Bitcoin we just gave away, shout us out. We'd love to shout you out in the chat. It looks like some goblin. We got big hearts from him. I don't know if he won or who won that, but new subscriber from the philippines jerome welcome to the chat it looks like we have john john are you fully back what's going on I'm rocking man can you guys hear right. can you guys hear uh dcfs showing up at my house right now or... <laughs> <laughs> no 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 you're good man no i explained that you've got a sick kid at home and we're just happy to have you even though i know you're super busy but man we love this is one of the best streams we've had yet this is great word up man what else is going on? What else is on your mind, dude? What are we uh, What are we talking about the rest of the show? Oh, what we're talking about today, I think just managing expectations in the way that like newcomers to Bitcoin, I think we're going to see as we do every kind of holiday season, a lot of people sitting around with family, seeing the success of their siblings or, or parents or children, trading stories learning about bitcoin so we're going to see a lot of newcomers so it's like my question would be how did bitcoin change you when you came to it in the way that you 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 were already pretty focused on money like career wise so like you know what changed for you in terms of day to day how did priorities shift just anything just broad yeah stuff. so i mean the thing about it is like you know coming into bitcoin when i did and like the first time i heard about it was 15. first time i got in was 16. Um, I think I didn't really understand it um, um, through a process of like what the bear market forced upon us through 17, 18, and 19. And so, uh, or at least the end of 17, I should say. Um, and so like, you know, I, I, that all happened as I like kind of got married and had children. And so like a lot of these things like really kind of fell into place at the first time. So the first thing like Bitcoin did for me is it gave me an ability to take a deep breath. So like, you know, things that were going well for me and like the fiat mines and some of the financial like freedom that kind of came from, from some of that success, if you will. Um, but honestly, like I was still in this panic. Like I was still, you know, um, like this, I constantly do these like time value of money calculations from like finance 101. And I'd sit there playing around with like, well, like how much money do I gotta leave them? So like, they don't have the life that I did. And I was like, okay, well, how, many, how much do I have to do for two generations? And that's like, mm -hmm. 
damn, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, that doesn't seem like, that's just like, that's just way too much. That can't be right. You know? And so um, Bitcoin finally gave me the ability to take a deep breath. It was like, it felt like, you know, I always felt like this weird image of being like Leon Lett in the 93 Super Bowl or whatever, when Don Beebe comes and knocks the ball out of his hand right before the end zone. People who are older remember this. People who are younger are like rolling their eyes at me right now. It's all good. Just Google Leon Lett in the Super Bowl. You'll see what I mean. But I had this image of just like fumbling the ball and like Bitcoin felt like it gave me this like, like now I can just relax. Um, and not like as though I relaxed and retired and kind of like, you know, start stop doing anything, but it gave me an ability to realize that like, okay, this is how I will transfer my hard work and energy to my kids. This is, this is how, this will be my vehicle. Um, and this makes a lot more sense to me. Um, I recognize there's credible, like when I first bought Bitcoin, I didn't know there was a 21 million like supply. I had no idea. It's like, mm -hmm. so, you know, somebody got me to buying ETH. I started buying ETH <laughs> and then like, I was like, I know, I know. I've told the story before. I've had to make this confession live on Sunday, Sundays to tell you. <laughs> Thankful to Joe that I got out of, out, of, out of all my bags of shit. But like, the point is, is that like, you know, and I, I'm sure I'm not unique to this. A lot of us have probably had this journey, like, you know, going through altcoins or being introduced to some other project or whatever it is, right? Like the crypto buddies are making a bunch of money back in the day. So anywho, in, in short, like, Bitcoin, the first thing it did is it gave me the ability to take a deep breath and recognize that I finally found a vehicle to be able to like transfer my hard work through time and space to my kids in the future. And like that, like allowed for me to focus better on a lot of things that were more important to me, man. Like for me, it, you know, like if, if my kids aren't happy and healthy, then what am I doing? Right. Like what was all this other stuff matter? And so it allowed for me to be a more present father man, and, and like to be in a position where like I think a lot of young fathers probably aren't. You know, the reality is I'm at home right now with my kid. A lot of fathers can't do that when they're sick, man. And like, so it gave me an opportunity really to like focus on the things that actually mattered to me. Um, and so like, you know, like that was like the, the, the most important thing that it did. And like, so yeah, you start, you stop worrying about like keeping up with Joneses. You know, I, I, I tell the story, a good buddy of mine is third congressional uh, 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 district congressman in Michigan. Um, era the the Meyer family a uh, 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 grocery chain and um, you know we're on the same board at Student Veterans of America and we're you know going to talk to some 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 uh, representatives about some veterans bill and and why it was important for them to vote for it etc cetera, etc cetera. and like here's this poor kid from Chicago just finally getting out of the chains of poverty wearing a you know two thousand dollar sport coat next to me is a billionaire wearing a coat from H and M it's like what am I doing here. <laughs> like what am I doing it's so stupid you know what I mean I'm just like what am I trying to prove and and like these were all kind of things that all you know not in any particular order or any fashion but just like the culmination of these like various things of recognizing how little like the things around me that used to matter matter and so you know it just allowed for me to kind of like take a different level of optionality I think a lot of people came to Bitcoin perhaps have made a lot of you know you know, grown their wealth significantly depending on when they got in. And like, for me, it really worked the other way. Like life changed for me before I got to Bitcoin, at least and like the optionality of it. But it was the first time I took a deep breath. It was the first time that in like taking that deep breath that I could look clearly at things that were important to me. Like, dude, you, you and I talk about like some of the health things and like we've talked about, you know, working out and clubhouse and stuff like that. Dude, I was in terrible shape before Bitcoin. I'm in way better shape now. I didn't see my abdominal muscles until Bitcoin, dude. <laughs> like, like i think bitcoin for abs you know um so i mean there's just there's so much that changed but all of it all of it was well things that i think are more materially important right like like the fact that like you know i could spend more time with my family the fact that like i knew that i could do that right like you know the, the things that i want to try to impart to my kids became a lot easier to align because like bitcoin makes sense <laughs> like the rest of the world just doesn't and so like a lot of it just like kind of just it, like it just took this really blurry world and made it much more clear. Um, I was uh, I was talking to, to Ben um, uh, BTC sessions and um, I, I brought up the analogy of like when you see people who like wear these monochromatic glasses because they're colorblind, like when they put it on, you see this effect on them. They're just like, oh, shit, you know, and some of them get emotional sometimes. Right. Like. It literally felt like I put on these monochromatic glasses. So I'm telling Ben this story. And he's like, John, because I'm colorblind. 
I, uh, <laughs> I've actually had this experience. And he goes, it's exactly <laughs> like that. And, and it just felt like that. Like the best way I would summarize it, and for me, it just felt like I was able to see like a, a palette to the world that just wasn't there in Bitcoin were like those monochromatic glasses, if you will. Um, it's probably the best summary I could put to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, on the first level, like I feel like you're into that next generation. You're seeing it benefit, you know, your wife and kid. Um, I'm seeing it benefit me and my close family. And that's probably like the second iteration. Like the first thing that happened when I got into Bitcoin is I noticed that I could buy time for myself later and I could have time to take care of myself in ways that I hadn't before. You know, I got to quit my fiat job. I got to quit, you know, moonlighting at a grocery store. I just just all the things I hated in my life just just left um, because it helps you reprioritize because once you can buy time for yourself and store energy for yourself later, you know, the things that matter to you become pretty clear. And I'm not saying life is like a straight up shot. Once you get into Bitcoin, it's not like that at all, but it does have a clarifying effect. Like you said, I mean, you see the world through a different lens for sure at a certain level of, of, of grokking Bitcoin. Dude, you had to tell me, I don't, I don't know a lot about your origin story. And so, I mean, and I've always been interested. So to the extent that I, I you know, missed this, you have to fill me in a little bit, but like, tell me a little bit about kind of your entrance into, into like clarity and truth. Yeah, my interest in the clarity and truth. Uh, we're still working on that, but I'm starting <laughs> with, uh, with, with Bitcoin. Basically I was, uh, you know, fighting MMA training MMA at Jackson Wink, uh, down in New Mexico out in the desert and i uh i never asked you this but you ever train with curtis by chance my buddy curtis blades i i don't know i know of curtis blades but i've never trained with curtis blades actually but i think he's been in and out of that camp down in albuquerque he's done it a few times he's been training in, in, at elevation i think in colorado as well so i just i thought word you know, word keep telling me the story i'll yeah. tell you the curtis story after that <laughs> yeah for sure no so i train with like john uh holly uh karate hottie um all killers um it was a great time but but training takes a lot of a lot of time and energy man it takes like four or five six hours a day um just of the various like mental tasks the and then you got to cook for yourself at the end of that to make sure you're getting the healthiest food and it's just it's a full-time job so to work outside of that i was like i can't make enough money to support me and my fiance you know what I mean? Like doing this, um, I'm getting paid. I'm not even getting paid like to fight in the end of it. Like, you know, you don't, most 99% of fighters don't make any money at all. It's a really, unre you have to really love it. And I was like, okay, I got to look for other options. So I'm going to try trading. Um, I got in a little competition with my brother trading basically options and I was finding success. You know, I was that lucky guy who, uh, you know, got like 12 trades in a row, right? Like really ballsy call option trades. And uh, I found that I had success. What were you trading? Uh, investing... were, you trading? were you like trading spy calls or what were you trading? Like just like indexes? What were you doing? No, I was, I was having success trading in Bitcoin adjacent equities. So, you know, Bitcoin mining companies, okay. uh, micro strategy, shit like this. I mean, it was, it was going great. However, I came home one Christmas and my brother, you know, we'd been comparing notes and he had like blown me out of the water. I was like, well, how'd you do that? And he'd just been buying Bitcoin and holding it. And uh, now we're at the opposite case where I'm like a Bitcoin maniac and he doesn't hold any Bitcoin and he just like trades his stocks. It's Ew. so funny. <laughs> how is that possible? Dude, the well, person he, who orange pilled me, I got finally buying yeah. Bitcoin. The person who orange, orange pilled me, like one of my yeah. employees who still has a job and definitely shouldn't, but he does because he got me into Bitcoin. <laughs> like yeah. he, he literally, I just got him buying Bitcoin a few months ago. I was like, dude, you got huh. me into Bitcoin and for the last four years you weren't buying this? What the, you could have quit. Whoa, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, it crap kills me. But keep telling me that story. That's funny. It reminds me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was just friendly competition among brothers. My brother's a little younger than me. Um, he understands it. You know, he makes his own decisions. I don't know. Um, he, he, he holds, I'm sure he holds some Bitcoin, but it's like, I really went down the rabbit hole then. Like, I wasn't interested just in beating him. Like, I got hooked on this sovereignty thing, self-sovereignty. I got hooked on the hardware. I got hooked on store your own keys. I got hooked on the idea of having a secret 
and uh you know sharing that secret with others without revealing what the secret is which is a lot of the draw like of it. bitcoin like you know it. what i mean yeah, like yeah. that's kind of what you got to do and so it's like me and you hanging out on clubhouse and i you know i was training at the time so i was just listening to clubhouse running on the treadmill all day getting orange pilled by Dude, you so everybody sorry, else you on clubhouse for that long. <laughs> I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get you drunk in miami for sure dude. i promise <laughs> <laughs> um that's yeah man so i mean I did, I did not know that that's a really that's a fun story i like that i mean the yeah, one of the best things that, i like is like listening to these origin stories just because like you realize like dude there's so many different ways people like arrive at bitcoin and it's like like you just never know you have no idea like how people showed up at the party man it's just crazy to me sometimes for sure yeah yeah and the long and short of it was i was like well i don't want to work for a fiat job i need a bitcoin job so i emailed Safedeen. <laughs> And I was like, I'll work for you for free. And, you know, Saifedean, author of the Bitcoin Standard, he was like, that's not how we do things here. I'm going to pay you. And, uh, you know, that that's how I got started, man. And you started that, writing, you started writing and editing for him. Is that generally what you were doing? Or? Yeah, yeah. I edited the new edition of the Bitcoin Standard and the Fiat Standard, the principles of economics, which is forthcoming. And, you know, just started getting little Bitcoin jobs here and there based on his recommendation. So. It's a small community, man. If anyone's looking yeah, for a Bitcoin job. That so that's one of the things I love about Bitcoin is it's like, there's actually way more access than like in the fiat world. Like if you were to DM, like for the most part, if you DM me, like, and it wasn't some like some terribly stupid, like, you know, I don't know like whatever. For the most part, I reply. <laughs> um, there were a yeah. few long tail emails uh, during Sunday services real run where like, I just was like, uh, don't know how to reply <laughs> to this exactly. Um, I was like, what would Joel Olstein say? Um, but no, I kid. Um, but, but like the thing about it is like, I think that most people don't recognize like, so, so I don't know, more now than ever in the history of the world and more within Bitcoin than I think any other, like, I don't want to call space, but space, like the ability to just work hard and prove yourself and prove your merit without needing the paper certificate and you know, some, some recommendation from some college professor who didn't even work with you or whatever, right? Like that, that, that is like shifted so significantly, the ability to be able to get your message out, share your thoughts. Like, you know, I talk about this all the time and obviously like, you know, I'm a big fan of Joe's. Um, he's been a longtime friend of mine. He cannot shoot a basketball to save his life, but I, I mean, Joe's a brilliant mind. And so like, I think about like how fortunate I was to have like access so like listening to Joe and like bouncing stuff off of Joe for, for the last, you know, four or five years or whatever. And like, for me, it was like, like I got like a college education in that realm, you know, like it was like, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know it at the time. Like I'd be arguing with him, not realizing like, oh shit, you're right. And, and I'm not right. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I like, I think that like, I love that, that story. Um, I also need you to, to check in with, with safety because his name as I understand it and translate it in Arabic means God's sword. And what? I don't, yeah, so the, the safe means sword or knife. And no way. is like a very general term for God. And so I think you should drop that on him sometime and see how he replies. I also think it might even uptick some sales if you put God's sword on Musa on there. <laughs> see if that oh. see if you put a few put some copies out there and, and uptick sales based on that marketing uh, tactic. But no, I can't. Oh, remember. I didn't know that. The weird thing about working for Safedean is he speaks English better than I do. I mean, it's kind sure. of messed up that he. Yeah, I'm hilarious. just it was like a service that he let me work for him. <laughs> are you still Are you still helping him out? Are you still working with him? Or are you just doing uh, Bitcoin Magazine? full-time or like tell me where you're at now yeah man i'll work for anyone i'm at bitcoin magazine full-time but i'll edit anything y'all send my way um happy to do it do it for bitcoin do it for money um I'm, I'm pretty busy nowadays i mean i'm like 12 to 16 hours working for bitcoin magazine but Good. yeah i love i still love there's projects you gotta you gotta help out with uh i love working for the bitcoin times another publication with alex svetsky i don't know if you've checked sure. out yeah, that yeah. at all but yeah we're dropping a new dropping a new physical print edition soon so that's exciting it's awesome man that's super awesome yeah yeah so i uh found, glad you found your niche man that's dope yeah man it's great and i'm loving having this show i loved having you on i'm hoping we can get you on here after the holidays you know yeah, on yeah, the reg. I'll, I'll try to come more prepared with uh with less offspring <laughs> uh, audio <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's all good, man. I uh, I think we have to get pretty close to wrapping for the day, cool. but I just wanted to thank you again. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll yeah, have man. you on again as soon as we can, man. And if I don't I, talk, I had to a you... lot of fun. It's always good ch- um, ha- uh, hanging with you, Alex. I've uh, um, you know, I've shared my 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 pretty open uh, adornment for for what you're doing. Um, I love your writing. I learn from you still, and uh, certainly appreciate getting a chance to hang out, Chris. Um, I think we've sort of met in passing, um, but uh, it's good to meet you too, man. And yeah, man, I had fun. Thanks for putting up with all the chaos at the Fakori household. Yeah. No, we love it. It adds to the story, man. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, have a good holiday if I don't chat all with right, you. All right, guys, for sure. And hopefully we'll see you guys in Miami too, all y'all. And, and oh, for yeah. All you, for all you boomers that I upset the other day while, while on Clubhouse, yo, I'm buying all <laughs> of you guys drinks. So uh, if you catch me in Miami and you're a boomer, drinks are on me. It's, it's a, <laughs> I'm going to have a bunch of old people tap me on the shoulder. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> all right oh, guys yeah, i'll see man. you soon take care yeah catch you later john thanks all right guys very bullish on john go follow him on twitter i think oh shit what's his uh pay it forward dad i think is his handle at pay it forward dad go check him out just like the nicest guy i love talking to that guy um wrap things up real quick guys we're gonna go into one last news story with natalie um, and then we're going to give away some more Bitcoin. So hang tight. And uh, here is a news story with uh, Natalie Brunel. Mm-hmm.